get started because we're so far behind. 2683. 2683. Right on the top. So say for Torah. Okay. Everybody ready? Here we go. Okay. Left hand column. In your art school, 2683, a Sefer Torah that gets burnt. So I'm already telling you now that it doesn't mean a full Sefer Torah. Even if you see one sentence of a Sefer Torah or a Nevi'im or Ksuvim, you, got, you have to rent your clothes. The Ksiv, this is what happened. Yermia wrote Eicha. And the idea of writing Eicha was to inspire people, laminations, to, to inspire people to do tshuva, to repent, so that the destruction wouldn't happen. Well, they brought it to the king. And what do you think happened? The king took it, ripped it up, and threw it in the fire. So look what it says over here. It happens that when Yehudi read three stanzas and four, what does that mean, three stanzas and four? We're going to see in a minute. The king cut it with the scribe's razor and threw it into the fire in the fireplace. In other words, everybody was living in an echo chamber. They only wanted to accept things the way they saw the world, not the way anybody else saw the world. My shalosh dalvois varbo. What does it mean? Three or four, and four. Amalele yakim. They said to King Yoyakim, "Cause of Yirmiya sefer kinnus. Yirmiya has wrote the book of lamentations. That is a prophet, a, a prophecy about the the impending doom of Klai Yisrael. Amalohu maxibe. What's written in it? Eicha yoshva bedad. Alish she sits in solitude." I'm a lahu, I know Malka, I'm a king, and it's in my power, and I will remain in power even if my subjects are exiled. Amrulay, then it says further, Bahu Tivka Balaila. She weeps bitterly in the night. Zion. He said, I know Malka, I'm a king. I'm not going to be affected by this. The third Pasik. Judah has gone into exile among the sufferings. He said, Anna Malka, I'm a king. I'm not going to go into exile. Now it says like this. The fourth one says, Dark age, see in Avelos, The roads of Zion are mourning. He said, Anna Malka, I'm a king. And came the next, the fifth verse. Hayut Sorel Arash. Her adversaries became her man, but will become her master. That means he would lose his throne. Amalei Ma'anron. Who says this? And the rest of the Pasuk says, Ki Hashem hoiga roi bishoel. For Hashem has spoken of her because of her abundant transactions. Miyad koda kol askorois. He cut out all the askorois. All the names of Hashem. You hear this? He cut out all the names of Hashem that were in the scroll of of the of the Echa and burnt them in a fire. That's why it says, Pachadu, and they did not fear, and they did not rent their garments, the kings and all his servants. Michlal, the replies, the boy that they should have rent their clothes by the burning of the Psukim of the of, of Echa. If you look at the little Taisvis, he says over there, it doesn't, Taisvis over there, the, the uh, one, two, three, four, the fourth Taisvis says, he doesn't know where the word Askorois means for Hashem, even if it's not Hashem, even if one Pusik gets burnt, you got to re rise Kriya. So Amalai Rapopola Abaya said, Abaya, Rapopola Abaya, Amal Mishum Shemir's wife. Maybe they sure were expected to rent the clothes because they heard the bad tidings of the impending destruction. That if they don't do tshuva, they're going. They don't repent. The base of Migdash is going to be destroyed. Were there bad tidings at that time? No. This was a future prophecy that if you don't repent, this will happen. Right now, everything was cool. What happened? 
that they burnt the, the, the echo. They burnt the echo. You should got to you got to want your clothes. Amar Rav Chelboy, Amar Rav Huna. Haroy is say petayri shenikra. Somebody who's there, you have to see it. Okay, this is very important. You have to see you one who's there and who sees it that it was burnt. Chayiv likra shnei kriyas. He has to rent two rents in his garment. Achas al gevil, one on the destroyed parchment. The achad al ksab and the other one on the script. Shenema because it says. After the three kings burned the scroll and the words, both the scroll and the words. So you see, the scroll is one thing, the words is another thing. This is the famous story about the Arugia Malchus when they wrapped him in the sea. He said, The parchment is being burned, but the, the words are pochis pa'aber are flying in the sky. The parchment is one thing, the words are something else. We are now on 2026A4. Rab Abba the Rav Huna Barchia Habi Yosri. They were sitting around. Karabi Abba, Rab Abba Rose, Boyle Ifune. He needed to go to the bathroom. Shikle Litutfe at Achte Abe Sadi. He put his, took off his twillin and put him on a cushion while he was going to the bathroom. Asye Bas Namiso, an ostrich came, Ubola Vivloi, and swallowed up the Tfilin. Omar, Abai Omar said, Rababo, Hashta Chaibili Shte Krisis. I will now am obligated to rent my garment twice. Amalei, Minolacha, said Rabuna Bachia, why? Bahabidi Dei Abiyo, why this happened to me? And I came to Ramasna to ask him whether I needed two rice kriya on an ostrich eating my twillin. And I didn't have any, he didn't have all the answer. I came in front of Rabbi Yehuda. So says Shmuel. It's only the only thing that you have to rip your clothes. You have to rise kriya is when it's destroyed forcefully, like the accident that happened with Yahu King Yahu who forcefully threw Echa, the scroll of Echa, into the fire. And nobody had the power to stop it. Here, an ostrich eating is something unusual. You can't expect it. That you don't have to rise kriya. Are Yehuda Minola, how do I know that the ruins of the city of Yehuda? You have to go ahead and rip your clothes. Men came from Shechem, Shiloh, and Shimron. Shemoyne ish megulche zokin ukriya begodim umisguided him. Eighty men with shaven beards and rent garments and having cut their flesh umincho lavaina biyodim lahabi beis Hashem with offerings and frankincense in their hands to bring to the house of Hashem. These guys came to bring kabonai sacrifices in the base of Migdash with, because they had not gotten the news that unfortunately Nebuchadnezzar had destroyed the first base of Migdash. But while they were walking along the way, they saw the bombed out, burnt out cities of Yehuda, of the city of the kingdom of Judah. And so they rent their clothes upon seeing the destruction of the cities, even though they thought that the Beis Amigdash was still standing. Amar Rav Chelboi, Amar Ula Beria, Amar Rabbi Elazar. Oimer, it says, I mean, Haraya Are Yehuda Bechubanon, one who sees the cities of Yehuda in their destructive state. <laughs> Sorry, hold on a second. Oimer should say, Are Kotshcha Hoyu Midba Bekaira. Your say your holy cities have become a wilderness, and then Sharip is closed. You shall you shalim one who sees you shalim in its destroyed state. Ayme should say, Tzion Midbar, Zion has become a wilderness. How you see you shalim shemama, you into a wasteland, and Rip is closed. Beis Amidish Bichurbanai, 
one who sees the holy base of Mikdash in its destroyed state. Aimer should say, base kotshenu visifartenu, our whole, our, our base of Mikdash, our temple of holiness and our splendor, ashehilu avisenu, which our father, our fathers, our forefathers praised you, Hashem. Hayul Israfaseish has become a fiery of a kind of conflagration. Bechol machmadeu and all that we decided, desired, Hayul lecharva has become destroyed. The Kairan should rent his garment. Okay. Any questions up to this point? Okay. Then we go further. Kaira al amigdash v'hoisiv al Yerushalayim. One rips his clothes on the on the base of Migdash, and then if he sees Yerushalayim afterwards destroyed, he should continue the rip that he started when he ripped his clothes for the destruction of the base of Migdash. Virimino, but I got a contradiction. In the bride, another bride says as follows: Echad Shemeya where the one hears about the destruction of the Beis HaMikdash in the time, in the generation that the Beis HaMikdash was destroyed. The Echad Arroyo, the one who actually sees the ruins, and that's in any generation. Okay, again, Echad HaShemeya was only in the generation that the Beis HaMikdash was destroyed. The Echad Arroyo, that means anybody who goes today to the Kaisel, and hasn't been there in 30 days and sees the base of Megdash, the sees it in its destroyed state. From the moment he reaches Saifim, he should rent his clothes. The today we don't rent the clothes until we're in the plaza of the uh of the um Kaisala Marabi of the Wailing Wall. Then we rip our clothes. The Kaira. Al Migdash with Neatzmai, and he has we're on twenty six a five, and he must rent for the base for the base of Migdash by itself. But Al Yerushalayim with Neatzmai, and Yerushalayim by itself, meaning you do not extend the rip that you started when you went to, when you rise Kriya for the base of Migdash, but you have to do a separate rent for Yerushalayim. As opposed to the first price that says you just continue when you see Yerushalayim, the rent that you began when you saw the base of Migdash. Says the Gemara like Kash, it's not a contradiction. Hob de Pogab and Migdash Beresha, the original that says you simply extend the rip from the base of Migdash to Yerushalayim is when you first encounter the base of Migdash first. Hob de Pogab Yerushalayim Beresha. The second one is where you pegay, where you you encountered Yerushalayim before you got to the base of Midrash. So when you got to Yerushalayim, you ripped your clothes when you saw its destruction. Then you get to the base of Midrash and see its destruction. That requires already a new rip because that's a much greater. The loss of the base of Midrash is far greater loss than the loss of Yerushalayim. Tanu Rabbanon, and and to this day we still rip our clothes. If you haven't been to the to the base, if you haven't been to the Kaisal Amaravi, the, the Western Wall, in more than 30 days or 30 days or more, you have to go ahead and you have to rent your clothes. That's what it is. Any questions about this? Or Jerry, Jeff, we're good? No, where are you holding? Hi, Daddy. How are you? We're on the Hi. bottom of Chav Vav Omid Aleph, 26A5. Chav Vav Amin Aleph, where we left off yesterday. Chav Vav Amin Aleph. Very bad. Okay. On the bottom, literally on the bottom. Tanu Rabbanon on the bottom. The last line. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Now the question is like this. Um. Because I'm, I'm, again, so today we do rip our clothes when we haven't been to the base of I mean, when we haven't been to the Kaisel once in thirty days. That is a rule. When you get into the plaza, you get to the part where you wash your hands. Over there, you rip your clothes. There's somebody there that you can find that will cut your shirt and that you can rip rice kriya. Okay? It's based on this Gemara right over here. So you should now, wear an old shirt. You wear an old shirt. Yeah, people, some people rip their, their undergarments. Some people just do their undershirt. So it depends. There are those who do that. Tanura Bala. The kulan, all the what we said before, all the rips, 
the rising Kriya, Rishoyin Lishulolon. You're allowed to afterwards base them. You're allowed to stick them back together with one big with one big stitch or with some glue. Ula Mailalon and to fold them, Ula Kaitan and to gather them. Velasis came in Sulmin with the stitch it like a ladder with big stitches. Abaloila Khaisa, but you're not allowed to mend them correctly. Amar of Khizda, what does that mean? We're now on Ahmed Bay's 26B1. In other words, Ke Ubhi Ihu Ihui Alexandri, like the way they meant things in Alexandra, right? In other words, what they used to do, Taisvis says it, if you take a look, be Shlani Aizu Oichi, Koshain Mikoimoi Nikar. The place is not. You, they did it such a fine job that you couldn't tell that there was a rip in the clothing. They would fold, they would fold the clothing inward and sew from the inside and then do very tight, very tight stitches on the outside, very thin, so that it was very almost not discernible that there had ever been a rent in there before. Tanu Rabbanan, says the Rabbanan. Hakoire, one who rents his clothes, on the basket. That means he's using a shirt that he already rice kriya, that he had already stuck back together, and now he rips again the same shirt in the same space. or on the fold, or in the gathering, sumois, or on the lattice stitches, yotza, he has not fulfilled his new obligation. Of rising Kriya. But if he rents it, if it was mended completely like the Alexandrian way of mending it, so that you barely can tell that there ever was a rip there in the first place, Yotza, then you fulfill your obligation. Exactly what we said. What are we talking about? The Yichud Alexandri. Tonu Rabbonin. One who rents his garment after he rips it, is permitted to invert the rent to the bottom of the garment and then mend it, to turn it into, turn the, to, to turn the garment upside down and make the rent part the part of the hem, and then you can heal it up. But not, 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 not if it was your parents. Well, wait, wait, wait. Daddy, I believe we're getting to that. Hold on. Rab Shimon ben Alaza Oisala Choysoi he says you're not allowed to mend it even if it's inverted. So that's not so partial, Daddy, whether that means apparent or not apparent, because what's Rav Shimon ben Eloza saying there? It might be only the sheet of Rav Shimon ben Eloza that doesn't allow it. We, it's a very unclear whether it means, right? Whether it means apparent or it means anybody. You see that? Look at Rav Shimon ben Eloza. Also, you're not allowed to do it. Just like the seller who originally rent the garment is permitted, is forbidden to mend it. So too is the buyer forbidden to mend it. Therefore, the seller must tell the buyer that he's buying a garment that, that somebody had rice kriya on and that you may never mend it. You have to live with the rip inside this garment that you're purchasing. This again was a time when garments were expensive and people had very few garments. They weren't throwaway. There was no Walmarts that you can walk in and buy a, a $10 shirt. Yeah. So now to my father's point. You can sell it to, to a Jewish uh, a buyer. Yeah, to a Jewish buyer. But Not even a Jewish buyer... The truth is, you're not allowed to have it sewn up because it's a matter of covered. We yeah, the same. The guy can do whatever he wants. True, but you have to tell him, I ripped it for the sake of my parents. Now, right. here's the thing. My father is right about the parents. We said before that a rip for the parents may never be repaired, and that's the reason why we always throw away the clothing that was ripped after they, they're used up. Okay? They have to, they have to be destroyed. We may, we're probably talking over here about other relatives. But if we're dealing with other relatives, that's somewhat problematic because we learned before, you're allowed to fix it up afterwards. 
So I'm not 100% sure how, what this Gemara is completely, this Gemara we just learned, what exactly is it completely dealing with? Okay, so I'm a little, uh, I don't have it completely clear about this. Okay, so the bottom says, this does not mean that he's permitted to mend it immediately. Rather, he waits the amount of time that is normally required for crude stitching. 30 days after the death of a parent, seven days for the death of another relative, and one day for any other tragedy, and then he may mend it instead of merely stitching it crudely. So there's obviously, it's a different sheet of, than what we learned before. That was number five on the bottom, okay? Which was really saying that little, those little Rashi's on the side, Rashi Ksavyad, Rashi Kuti. So let's keep going. Tanu Rabbana, Tehilas Kriya Tefach. The initial rent must be at least a Tefach, must be a hand breadth. Betoisefes Shleshet Atzbois. And the extension, let's say you're extending it because you now saw Yerushalayim, must be extended by at least three finger breaths. Dibir Rabbi Meir, Rabbi Yehuda Aimer, Tchilas Kriya Shleshet Etzboiz. The initial rent must be at least three finger breaths. Betoisefes Koshu, and the extension could be even in just a drop, a minute amount. Ama Ulo, says Ulo, Halacha ki rameya bekriya. The halacha follows rameya, like in the original rent, which means it must be at least the size of a tefach. The halacha ki Rabbi Yehuda b'tayseves, and the halacha is like Rabbi Yehuda with the extension that it could be any size. Tan and Ami Hachi, Rabbi Yaisi Ami Tachila Tkriya Tefach. The initial rent must be at least a tefach. B'tayseves Kolshu and the extension any size. The question is. The question is, we learned before from Shmuel, when it comes to Avelos, we always make all. We're always go lenient. So how come you have to rent in a full tefak instead of just three finger breaths, which is the smaller shear? The answer is... Yeah, the Gemara, nothing the Gemara, to do in Avelos. The Gemara is going to tell us that Avelos is one thing. Korea Rising Kriya, ripping your clothes, is a separate thing entirely. When did Shmuel say we go leniently? That's by Abelus. Kriya is actually mentioned biblically in the Torah. It's Minatora, yeah. In the Torah, it mentions about, it says regarding Aaron Akai, and Moshe tells him, don't rip your clothes. Which means that everybody else should rip their clothes. Nowhere in the Torah does it mention Avelus. You don't find any din about Avelus. Avelus is only rabbinical in nature. It's not biblical. So Korea ripping has a biblical. By, biblical by, by, by Avon, you know, in the before Matan Torah. First of all, it's by Yavai Avram, Lisboid Lissara Ulif Kaisa. It says nothing about Avelus. The word mm-hmm. Avelus does apply. Now, we're talking besides what anything that happened before Matan Torah is not Aloha unto us. It's only after, except for what happened in Mora and Shabbos. But, so, and then Brismila and the Giranosha. But and but the bottom line here is is that Korea is real is the real thing. That is the reason why. In case when do we rise Korea at the funeral home in front of the Oren is when right we rise Korea. We don't write. It's only after we bury the body that we begin to sit Abelus. Right. So it's two complete different time periods. In fact, if somebody is taking a body to Eretz Yisrael, but they first had a funeral here in America, you rise Kriya here in America. Right. You bury the body in Eretz Yisrael and then you sit, begin to sit 
Abelus. So it could be literally be hours and hours later between the two. Anyways, further. Tanu Rabbanon. Amuloi meis of the Vikara. If they inform somebody that his father, heaven forbid, had died and he, and he ripped his clothes, meis benoi v'ahisip, and after that mourning period has passed, they inform him that his son passed away and he extends the rent. So the part where he extended it for his son, tachtoin misache, the bottom could be mended, elyoin, the part that he ripped, the upper part for his parents, Eina misache cannot be cannot be mended. Twenty six B two, twenty six B two. Meis benoy v'kara. If first he's told his son passed away and he rips his clothes, and afterwards he's told meis other b'hoisip his father heaven forbid passed away and he extends the rip. El yoy misache the part that he ripped on top for his son. Could be mended. The lower part cannot be mended because it's for his parent. Boy, in one report, he finds out he had a terrible tragedy. Everybody passed away father, mother, brother, and sister. By the way, we, we, we ask him that if, 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 you, if you did the son first, and then the father or the mother died, you do it on a separate, not extended. You don't extend it. Right. So, wait, 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 Daddy, you're jumping the gun. Patience. Wait for the Gemara to finish. Yeah. This man, the Oma says, Kaira Kura Achas Lakulon. He makes one big rip for all of them when he gets one report. Rabbi Yehuda Ben Beseira Rabbi Yehuda ben Beseraima, Amar Harav Avimari, and my father says, "Al kul of kara echad, on all of them besides appearance, you make one long rip. Al avivimai kara echad for his father and a mother, he has to make a separate rip. He has to make a separate rip. But the Ramban says." If you get a report that both your parents were nifter on the same day, you make one rip for both of them. But because at the end of the day, they your parents. You don't have to make two rips, one for your father and one for your mother. No. As I pass in the Ramban. Right. But you have to make one rip for your parents, a second rip for all the other relatives. This is the Gemara. That's what you were saying, Daddy. This right. Gemara right here. The fee, she for example, or... uh, in a car accident. Uh, everybody dies. So, uh, right, right. That's what happened. Or I will tell you this: in World War Two, in the Holocaust, if one after the war heard that in 1944, on the 40th day of the Oymer, the, the entire city, the yeah. entire city of Berksaz was taken in one shot. And therefore, on one day, in my case, especially on my mother's side, grandparents, uncles, aunts, children wiped all on one day. Everybody, the entire families were wiped out in one day. The yard side is the 40th day of the Oyma, Berik says. The 41st day of the Oyma is, the, is Minkach, right? Chust is right there too. It's all in one, in one uh, period. And and you find out this is when this would have applied. The peace ain't my seeping out correct kera of the emoy because one does not extend the rent that he made for his father and mother. The rent for the father and mother is one thing, every other relative is another thing entirely. My tamo, what's the reason? Amar Abnachim by Yitzhak, the fish ain't bitaisephis. Because parents are not subject to a mere extension. Parents are parents. And that's that. Ama Shmuel, halacha ke Rabbi Yehuda ben Beseira, that you have to do a separate kriya for your parents. Umi Ama Shmuel, halacha, because Shmuel actually say that, but Ama Shmuel, halacha ke Rabbi Yehuda ben Beseira, that halacha is always like the lenient opinion, opinion in, in mourning. And Rabbi Yehuda ben Beseira is more stringent because he says you have to do an extra kriya 
Says the Gemara, like we discussed before, Avelos Lechod, Ukriya Lechod. Avelos is one thing, Ukriya is another thing entirely. Kriya is mentioned in the Torah, Avelos is not. Oh, then, Avelos. So uh, the it's only with the Rabbanat. It says Shmuel, we're going lenient on the Rabbanat. Midiarais, stuff that's alluded to, Midiaraisa, that's a different game entirely. Right. Says the Gemara at Eichon Kaira, how big a rent should one make? Says this man, the other at Tibura until your navel, all the way down to the belly button. The Yesh Aimrim Al Libai. The Yesh Aimrim Ad Libai until the heart. Af Abishain Rayel Adoba, even though we have no proof to the rule, Zechel Adoba. There's a, an allusion to the rule. Shenema, because it says, Rent your hearts and not your garments. This was, in other words, the Nabi Yoyal was calling out and saying, don't be superficial. Don't rip your clothes, but you leave your hearts right where you left, where they always were. Repent. Instead, don't rip your clothes and rip your heart instead and change. Okay, so it says like this, if the rent reached the navel and now other relatives passed away, so you need to do another kriya, you should move over on the garment, three finger breaths, 26 B3, and then rip again from the top. If the garment becomes filled with rents in the front, turn it around, so now you got all your rents in the back. Now you got all your th things in the back. Nismala mamala, if it became filled with rents on top, ifichulamalo, invert the the, the 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 garment so it becomes to the bottom, and now the lower part will become the top and use the top. But kaira milamato minatzadodim la yotza, because one who rents from the bottom or the sides has not fulfilled his obligation. Ella Shakoyan Godel Poire Milamata, except that a Koyan Godel, when his relative, not his parents, die, rents his garment from the bottom, meaning a Koyan Godel is not allowed to rise Creole, but he wants to show out his mourning. So he goes ahead and rips the bottom garment on the bottom, which is not a sign of Creole, but it is a sign of his mourning. Pligriba Ramasta. Ramasta Marukfa, Ramasta Marukfa were in an argument. With Avayim Ishmael Davu the Shmuel Vleidi, and both of them were saying the opinion in the name of Rav of Shmuel's mother and Levi, Levi being Shmuel's Rebbe. Chad Alma Kol Shiva Kaira. If the second relative's death is reported any time during the Shiva of the first relative, he has to rent a new, a new, a new kriya. After the Shiva, he can simply add. In fact, it goes by the 30 days, the first 30 days. If you get the news within the first 30 days of the first death, that there's been a second death, you need to do a new Kriya. After 30, you can simply extend. According to the one who says, that if you hear about it it's about the second death anytime within the seven days, you got to do a new kriya. Um, I, why is this true? Why is this so? Yeah. It's because you have not been given permission yet to base, to stick back together the original rip. So therefore, you got to do a new rip. A woman is allowed to baste her ripped immediately, even during the shiva. Hachanami, if that's the case, she should merely extend the original rip. Says the Gemara, also, no, because women are different. Their dignity is different than men's dignity. We can walk around in torn clothes, they can't. The one who says 30 days, because you weren't allowed to completely mend the original rip. But a father and a mother that you're never allowed to mend completely what was ripped. 
Hachanami, isn't it so that if another relative's death is reported, right, what do you call it? You should extend it. You should have to extend. It says, because of the honor that one owes his father and his mother. Which tells us again that so much about what we do with regard to Kriya and Avelus has in got COVID. to do with honor with COVID. Tanu Rabbana, Hayoitze Bebeget Kurua, one who goes Lefnei Ames, 26 before, if one goes with a ripped clothing to another, to another shiver house, Hareze Goizel Es Amesim B'Yes Achayim, it's deemed as if he's robbing both the deceased and the living. He's robbing, he's, what do you call it? No, he's going for his own, his own. Not his, his, I don't think it's his own. I don't think it's his own. He used a a, 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 a jacket that was already Korea. So Ah. people should think that. uh, Is this this after Shiva? So this looks, I'm not sure, no, I don't know if it's after Shiva. Well, it would have to be after Shiva. Right? Why would why would he be leaving his house during Shiva to go uh, go to another no, person? Daddy, Daddy, Jerry's right. Look at number thirty-six on the bottom. In explaining Rashi, this reference is to one who intends a funeral in a garment that was previously rent. He is robbing the living because he deceives them into thinking he rent over this deceased. And he's robbing the deceased since he did not make a new rent in his honor. Right? The latter pertains to a relative of the deceased who is obligated to rent his garment. Since neglecting to fulfill his yeah, uh, obligation. Yeah, but look at the next one. One of his own relatives. Relative. Look at the next line. Alternatively, it may refer to any person since he degrades the deceased by acting as though he has rent the garment in his honor. Robbing a deceased person of his honor is a most grievous offense since it can never be repaid. So to me, the better shot here is he had he got up from Shiva and he went out to somebody else's funeral with the ripped clothes and everybody thinks he's a grace tzaddik that he ripped clothes for this guy, when in fact he didn't do that. So it's Kenevis Das on the living. And it's Kenevis HaKovid. It's for what he mess. calls. What? Yeah, it's a Kenevis covered for the mess. And it's Kenevis covered for the mess. Let's keep going. So now, Rab Shimon Ben Gamliel Loima, Ha'ayma Lechaveiroi. If one tells his fellow, lend me your cloak and I will go visit my father who is ill. And he says straight out, and says straight out, that my father is not well. He's gravely ill. And his friend lends him the, lends him the cloak. And he goes and he found that his father passed away. Heaven forbid. He can rip the borrowed clothes and mend it afterwards. Because the person who lent it to him knew that this might happen. When he comes home, he returns the cloak with the rip, even though it's been sewn up to his friend, and then he pays him the extra amount of the loss of the value of the cloak. Right. Him, and it's not called Gimneba, because in lending it, he knew that this might happen. This is similar to lending somebody money. When you lend somebody money, you know full well that there's a chance you may not get your money back. You may not get your money back. So you give, you're lending money to somebody on the smag that if he doesn't give the money back, you Michael him and it'll be tzedakah. Because otherwise you can't lend him the money. 
The employee dog, but if he did not inform his fellow that he's borrowing the cloak to visit his gravely ill father, he's not allowed to touch it, he's not allowed to rip the cloak. But when he puts on the, something else later, of course, then he has to do it. Yeah, of course. And we're talking about what he's wearing at the time of the death. The time, yeah. An ill person whose relative dies. Person who himself is not well, and his relative dies. This is important. Ain my meeting We do not inform him that the relative died. Shema titorev date olav, lest his mind becomes muddled. The aim occurred upon him, and we don't rent our clothes in front of him. We don't come to him with ripped clothes. And we silence the women from, from crying in his presence. A sick person needs to be calm. You give him mental anguish and, and speed up his death or give him or make his mind go off. That absolutely is out of the question. You're not supposed to distress him. In any which way, shape, or form. Umikarin lekotem b'pnei agmas nefesh. That's why mm-hmm. when you mavak a choyle, you know you should know not to stay there too long. Correct. Same idea. Same unless unless the guy clearly wants you to. That's something else. Umikarin lekotem b'pnei agmas nefesh. We rip clothes for a minor whose relative has died because of grief. Our grief. In order to engender grief among everybody who sees him, and one rips his clothes for his father-in-law and mother-in-law, for the covet of his wife. Abel Rabose was taught in a brisa called Abel Barabose. These are the minor tractates at the end of a Vaidazara. Today we call it euphemistically. Mesechtis Simchais, the Mesechtis of joy. But it's really not about joy, it's about Avelus. A mourner should not place a child in his lap. Because when you play with a child, it brings to laughter. The Nimsa, Miskana, Alagrias, it will be disgraced before people that he's not taking his tragedy seriously. Right. And now the Mishnah said, Ema Arvin Ela Amites Vikufais. We do not serve the meal except on upright beds for those who are coming to be Menachem Abelus. For those who are coming to visit the Abelim, they don't sit on a low chair, they sit on a regular chair. Tanu Rabbana. Ha'oylech Lebesa Abel. If somebody visits a house of a mourner, if his own heart feels close to the mourner, he should serve the visitor on, the, on a meal on an overturned bed. In other words, the visitor should join the mourner and he is sitting on a low bed. He should be served on an upright bed. An unfortunate thing happened to Rava. Sorry. An unfortunate thing happened to Rava. In other words, somebody passed away. Abu was also known as Abu Bar Maduni. Twenty six B five came to came to visit him for mourning. Rav Zokif, Rav, where Rava Zokif, Rava went and overturned and righted a bed so that Abu Bamata could sit on it when he visited him. Abu Bamata caught the Abu Bamata overturned it. Because he wanted to sit with Rava, you know, on the same level as a mourner. Oma said, Rava Kamale Bai Bay Data How lacking in sense is this young Talmudical scholar? In other words, you're doing the wrong thing. You're not that close to me that you should be sitting on the same level as me during mourning. Tanu Rabana. We have a few more minutes here. Let's get on to today's stop. Tanu Rabana. If somebody's traveling from place to place and while in transit is informed of the death of one of his relatives and becomes a mourner. We're on today's staff. If it's possible to restrict his business activity, you might. 
you should continue to do business in conjunction with others, but not by himself. In other words, use your partners. Okay? Says the Gemara, When do we start turning over the beds? From when the body of the deceased leaves the door of the house. When the casket is sealed, when he's buried. Okay, so that and that's what we do today. Avelis starts upon the burial. Maizis shemais Rabbi Gamliel Azokin, or in the case if it's being flown off to Eretz Yisrael, the moment that it's out of your sight, out of your jurisdiction, is when Avelis starts. Maizis shemais Rabbi Gamliel Azokin, chivin shiyotzim ipesach beisa. As soon as it went, his body was removed from the house. Amalahem Rabbi Eliezer, Rabbi Eliezer said to Rabbi Gamliel's family, Kufi mitasechem, overturn the bed, because the Abela starts, the chivinch in his tami magoylel, when the lid of the casket was sealed, Amalahem Rabbi Yeshua, Rabbi Yeshua said to them, Kufi mitasechem, overturn your beds, Amulai, they told him, Kavar, Kafinu, Alpi, Zokin, we've already overturned them on the words of the Zokin, the Rabbi Eliezer, we did it early, when they when it left the house, not when it was buried. Tanu Rabbanon, Tanu Rabbanon, Hamitas of Shabbos. When do you straighten out the beds on Friday? From Mincha and onwards. Mincha would be the what it called. Uh, that's a very good question. Mincha Gedayla. This is Mincha Gedayla, which would be six and a half hours into the day, a half hour after midday. There are others known, it's Mitcha Ketana is nine and a half hours into the day. There are two Zamanah for Mitcha. The early Zaman Mitcha Gedoyle is, 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 an, is six and a half hours, a half hour after midday. And the other one is nine and a half hours into the day. The, the, the Gemur refers to Mitcha Ketana. So here the Gemara seems to be referring to Mitcha Ketana. Of course, that's problematic because why don't we say Mixa Sayarim? Since I have to overturn the beds, I have to straighten things up before Shabbos, and it's already Friday, and in fact, I'm allowed to bring Shabbos in early. Why can't I turn it over? So part of the answer to that would have to be that you're really only allowed to extend the Shabbos early into Friday from Mincha Ketana and onwards from nine and a half hours and onwards. So that would be one of the reasons why we go the whole way. Second. Well, you you second, say, no, you say, uh, mix the only if it's the last day. Ah. So this is not the last way, day, this is a Shabbos. So in other words, and that's where I was about to come, that if you're in the middle of, if you're in the middle of the Shiva, Shabbos comes, Shabbos, there's no mourning. There's no Avelis on Shabbos. <clears throat> Shabbos counts as one of the seven days of the Shiva. Right. It doesn't get rid of the Shiva. It's part of the Shiva. You just right. don't prava. You don't prava Avelis. You don't do Avelis, but it's still part of the Avelis of Shiva. Right. So therefore, you're smack dab in the middle of it, which turns out that Shiva... The seven is really one unit. If it's one unit, you can only say Miksayan Kikulai at the end of it. The end. Each yes. day, each day is not mutually exclusive. So that's so, why it's Minchikatama. That's why it's Minchikatana. Very good. Okay, further. Ula Matse Shabbos, Ava Pisha Emily Yeshav Eli Yamachad, even if only has one more day to sit, which is Sunday, <coughs> the seventh day of a Shiva, Khaizib Kaita. He nonetheless overturns the beds of his house because he's still obligated. We're now in 27A2. He's still obligated to practice the laws of mourning for the seventh for, for the uh, for the seventh day. Because mixes ayan kikula is only from the morning, in the morning of the seventh day, Sunday morning, after Shakris, he gets up, walks around the block, and then the Shiva is over. Okay, we're gonna stop right over here. <clears throat>